Hi DIYers, this is Frank at AlarmGrid. We're back in the AlarmGrid lab working on the 2GIG GC3 panel. Today we'll be showing you how to program the Honeywell 5853 wireless glass break detector. Uh, this is a pretty slick unit uh, designed to pick up uh, the sound or the thud uh, associated with broken glass. So uh, this is a great unit for homes or businesses, uh, primarily homes where uh, there are pets, um, as, as we've discussed in other videos. Um, there are motions out there, motion detectors that, that do have pet immunity. However, with certain pets, maybe cats, um, larger dogs that are active and move around, maybe jump off furniture, up, up and down, uh, running up and down stairwells, can trip motions and cause false alarms. A way to add further protection beyond just the door and window contacts, the glass break is a great, uh, great item for that. Um, it's also great for fixed panes of glass if they don't have an opening feature. So, you know, uh, skylights, bay windows, um, storefront windows, whatever it may be, the, all great candidates for this. Uh, the 5853 has a 25 foot detection radius. So anywhere within 25 feet, um, left, right, front or back, uh, bay, or front really just um, kind of in a radius this way in the front side of this unit, uh, it will detect any broken glass within that radius. Uh, there are sp specific types of glass that are, uh, that are not covered and that will not pick up. Hurricane uh, glass, uh, any types of like plexiglass that's not um, regular glass uh, will, not pick up, will not pick up. There's a specific guide uh, you can find in the install guide on our website, alarmgrid.com, that lists out the specific types of glass and the area that the glass uh, is required to have in order for this to pick it up. It does cover most glass though. So uh, we'll show you how to program this unit. First what you want to do is when you get this out of the box, you want to take a little flathead screwdriver and we'll want to pop, pop this open and swing it down and we'll have uh, our battery and our serial number. Um, I always like being in the habit of documenting the serial number. If you uh, have a camera or uh, on your phone or you just want to document it on a piece of paper, uh, today we're going to be putting this in our living room as our living room glass break. So we can just write down a piece of paper, living room glass break, and write the serial. Uh, we, will, we can also auto enroll it, uh, which I can show you how to do with the tamper button. But uh, the, the main reason why I want to open this up is to actually pull this little tab here. That will activate the glass break. You'll see the lights come on. And basically, this is just a um, way to prevent this battery from draining in the, uh, when this is stocked in inventory before it ends up at the customer's um, secured premise. So uh, now that this battery is active, uh, we can just point out here on the, on the back, on the inside of the cover, there's a few dip switches that can um, set sensitivity on here. So you can see. It's very, very small, but there's, a, there's two dip switches here, and they have uh, a few different settings. So you can use this guide on the inside of the panel cover uh, to set that sensitivity. You can usually leave it on default, which is medium, um, until you have any issues. And when you're doing your testing, either just by maybe opening and closing doors at the normal speed in the area, uh, or giving, you know, giving the wall a small knock, um, you can also use the Honeywell FG701, which is a uh, glass break simulator. Uh, that unit is to specifically designed to test these Honeywell glass breaks, so you can use that to test as well. Um, and based on where the glass is, you can lower or, or heighten this sensitivity. So for today's purposes, we'll leave it on, on the default medium sensitivity. Put our screwdriver down, and we have our sensor. We have our uh, sensor here. We're going to pop into programming. Uh, for today, we'll actually manually enter in, but just like any other uh, device, wireless device, you can use the tamper switch to auto enroll. Uh, the assumption is that we've already mounted this on the wall, or uh, we've already pulled the battery and closed it up. So we'll hit the two gig symbol on the top right, and then enter our installer code. The default installer code for the GC3 is 1561. Um, if you've changed that code already, then just use that code. So we'll use 1561. Go into system configuration. 
wireless zones. All right, so uh, there's two ways to get in here. We can either click over to the zone, or if we go back, once you're on what, uh, whichever zone number you want to be, we're just on zone one today. Click edit down the bottom here. Uh, we, here we have our programming. So on the top right, we're already in sensor type. This is a glass break, so we always want to have this set to what's called perimeter. Uh, that's zone, that's sensor type three. So perimeter is a setting so that when you arm stay or away, uh, this device is active immediately. Unlike a motion detector that would need to be disabled during stay mode, um, even if you are, are arm stay and in your home, if there's glass broken, uh, we want it to trip the alarm so that if there is a break in and somebody's breaking your glass, you know. Uh, some people ask, you know, well, what if we break a glass? Well, uh, it's an off chance, and if it does happen, then the alarm will go off and you can step to the keypad and disarm it. Um, but if you're worried about it, you can, you can set this to an interior type, like interior follower, and that will eliminate uh, this from being active during arm stay. We always recommend setting it on perimeter just to be more secure, so we'll keep it on perimeter for now. So we'll hit equipment code, and we'll select this little drop down uh, menu on the right. We'll swipe down to Honeywell. Uh, this is a glass break, uh, Honeywell 58. Oops. Go back in here, 5853. So it's actually listed right in the menu as 0519 for the serial uh, or for the equipment code. We'll go down to serial number, and this is where we can manually enter that in. So on the back side of the unit, you have uh, 062 6635. If you've already installed this on the wall, again, you could hit learn, and then uh, and, and then it would it would look for it. It would listen. I actually have some motions in the room, and that's why I'm not auto-enrolling right now. Um, so we can manually enter it like I did, uh, the 062-6635. And then we can go ahead and bump to the next, next selection here. Uh, before we move forward, back to the serial number, if this is already wall-mounted, and you, don't, uh, you can open this up and just verify the serial number on the inside. There's another sticker inside the tamper cover. Uh, so down here, we want to keep it on loop one. The 5853 is always loop one. Transmission delay, we'll disable that, as discussed in our other videos. We always want to disable that so that when there's an alarm, we get the alarm immediately. Um, if for whatever reason you've had false alarms in this particular zone before, uh, or you're just trying to uh, be very uh, cautious around false alarms, maybe there's high fines in your area, you can keep that enabled if you want, and that will map to the transmission delay period listed in the panel programming. Uh, so we'll go to Voice Descriptor, and then hit Edit Voice Descriptor. So we'll, we'll label this as the living, uh, living Room Glass Break. So we'll do Living Room Glass glass Break there. We'll hit Done. And then there's only a few more selections here. We'll hit uh, Sensor Reports. We always want Enabled, so it sends out to the central station. Hit sensor Supervised. Uh, we always want to supervise this to make sure that the panel is in communication with this and it's online. Um, if it ever does fall offline, it'll give you RF supervision trouble. We can hit sensor chime here. This isn't a unit that will fault very often and you don't really need a chime for it, so we'll just disable that for now. We'll hit return to system config, back out and save at the summary screen. Now, the best way to test this is to use the glass break simulator. So we can't really fault this and test right now. You could Give it, give it a knock if you wanted to and see living room glass break. Um, that's really the only way to test it. The way to truly test this unit from, for actual glass breakage is that glass break simulator, the FG701. You can purchase that on our website as well, alarmgrid.com. If you have any other questions on programming the 5853 glass break to your GC3 panel, you can email us at support at alarmgrid.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel.